Hey there, what's up? Santi here, and today I want to share with you a workflow for being able to search across the contents of several PDF files. So I mean that if you have a couple of PDFs and you want to be able to search the contents of all of them globally, say you're looking for a concept such as philosophy, which is an example I'll give you, you want to see how different authors and how these different sources have used that concept in context. It's really, really cool. I'll give you a better example just by showing you. Uh, here I have a couple of PDFs on the side here in, in a folder in Obsidian. Here I have them in just to show you and yes I'm learning modern Greek that's why I have a, a few PDFs for that and I actually use this quite a lot for language learning I might talk about that in a second but yeah here I have a couple of other topics like settle casting and well yeah like this really cool book called the flinch which is in PDF form online an introduction to philosophy, just an article on philosophy. And let's say again that we want to search the word philosophy. We want to see how it's used across all these different PDFs, right? And as you can see, it's already in three different PDFs. One, of course, is this introduction to philosophy. And you can actually see how uh, it's used across all of that book just by command finding it. But then what's cool is that you can also see how it's used in other contexts, in other books. And this one is actually quite interesting because philosophy in the Greek book is, is actually talking about the etymology, which philo means love and sophia means wisdom. So philosophia. And another fun fact, in case you already knew that one, is that philos in modern Greek, it means friend. It doesn't mean love anymore. So that's actually quite, quite interesting. <laughs> so yeah, actually in the context of language learning, this is how I use this workflow and it's really, really helpful. So here I have a couple of words in Greek that I want to see how they're using context. So here I have this one called panda, which sounds like panda the animal, but it actually means always. So if I use a shortcut, Ctrl Shift F, I can actually search this term across Obsidian and look at that. So now I have a list of different things. You can see all the different results that you have in here. I can collapse them or I can expand them if I want to. I prefer seeing this collapse. Here I can see a couple of examples how it's used in context. Here I can see a definition. And if I search further, I can see again a couple of different sentences. And this is really, really helpful for language learning. You can have all the PDFs and different files that you want from example sentences. And now you can search any word across various contexts without having to go individually to each PDF to find that specific concept. Instead, you can just do a global search across all of your resources and stumble upon of tons of different contexts based on the search term that you're looking for. So if you're particularly interested in this concept of using it for language learning, for instance, this way of building kind of like a global database of resources for example sentences is just invaluable. So I, I find this really, really helpful for language learning, but of course this can be applicable to anything that you want to have like a bit of a nice database that is completely searchable through Mark down. It's really helpful. So in case you're interested, particularly on the, on the aspect of language learning, I actually have a second channel. I started to make a couple of videos there and I'm going to be sharing more useful resources there regarding language learning. But this video, I just want to make it focus about just the general concept of being able to search across different files, regardless of the topic that you are into. So I'm going to show you how this works and yeah, we're going to set it up right now. Okay. So the very first thing that you got to do is you got to create a folder called PDFs, just like that. You can always change it, but you would need to configure things a little bit uh, because this is how the plugin organizes things, but I'll show you that. So what you need to do is you need to go to settings, community plugins, and then you need to browse for this plugin is actually called topic linking. This one right here, you're going to install it. Then you are going to enable it. There we go. And now, well, you could go to options, but right now I'll just show you how it works. Okay. So what the plugin will do is it's going to read every PDF that is already in the PDFs folder. So here it is. And then when you run the command in Obsidian with control P, you're going to search PDF and it's going to be the one that says topic linking extract markdown from PDF. So it's going to create a bunch of files out of all of the contents of the PDF. And that's how it's searchable. And it's really, really powerful. So just click on that and it's actually going to generate the folder automatically called generated. As you can see, it's still loading, so it's almost done. Okay, there it is. It seems to be done. If your PDF have a bunch of images, it's going to create actually a folder with all the images to embed in the markdown files, but I personally don't need this. So you can always delete this folder if you want, or you can actually go to the settings and, and configure it so that, that it doesn't save the images, right? So yeah, awesome. And that's pretty much it because now in this folder, you're going to have all the markdown file versions of the different PDFs that you have in your PDFs folder. So this is the searchable markdown version of that, right? So now I can already start doing what I was doing here. So I can just search this keyword and I can see how it's used across the different PDFs, right? So I can go there and then I can just click on this and then press Ctrl F to see how it's used 
across this same PDF. And if I don't like this visualization, I, at least I know that in this particular PDF, I have 282 uh, results and then I can search the actual PDF itself if I prefer to visualize things that way. But at least now I can localize exactly where I can find the terms that I'm looking at. So yeah, now when you go to the settings, you can actually configure things quite a bit. You can scroll all the way down until we find topic linking. And here you can decide a couple of things. So for, as you saw, like everything that is extracted from the PDFs into the markdown files goes to a folder called generated. If you want to change this, you can just like change the name here and it's going to automatically generate a folder with that particular name. Now the one that you do need to kind of keep an eye for is what you call this, like I said, like the default is PDF. So if you want to name it something else, you need to change it here and you would also need to change it here. So let's just say you want to name it sources, right? Then in that case, you're going to need to go to the settings and also change its name to sources. Otherwise you're going to have conflict. So yeah, just make sure you do that. Right now I'm just going to go back to what it was just for simplicity's sake. Here you have a couple of other settings that you can play with. Um, the one that I was mentioning is you can actually turn this off so that images are not added to a folder. I, I personally prefer that, but it's really up to you. I prefer not to have the images. So these are experimental features. So, you know, proceed with caution. I honestly don't really touch the settings. I think everything works pretty well as it is. So if you want to learn more, go to the community plugins. You can click on the plugin itself and here you can read a bit more information. So actually something you need to keep in mind is that this plugin is highly experimental. I really don't know uh, why that caution, like because it's, it's kind of scary. It can have unintended consequences on existing bolts. So it says kind of try it with test bolts. And that's why, I mean, just to be cautious, I created a separate vault for Obsidian for this purpose. So here you can create your different vaults. I have my personal files and it's just a separate one that I use for this purpose only. Uh, you could incorporate it into your own one, but if you're gonna do that, then I do recommend you do backups. Either way, backups are always a good idea. So yeah, proceed with caution, but so far so good. I haven't had any issues. Another thing that is actually pretty interesting that I haven't played much with is this feature called topic linking is you can link topics. So when you click on this, it's gonna load for a second and then you have this folder called topics and it's kind of confusing to be honest i haven't figured it out fully but it kind of shows you topic word relevance so how relevant a word is within a particular context i find that kind of helpful for greek because here i can see a couple of words that are actually used frequently but i do find kind of the organization even though it looks cool like I don't, i'm not really sure of the functionality of it at least within my workflow i'm sure that if you play with that you're gonna be able to have better results than i've had so far but it's a very interesting concept so i think that workflow was pretty well for me there might be other methods if you are aware of another way to search across the contents of pdfs do let me know in the comments but for those of you that are quite new and want to learn how to really leverage the power of obsidian because to me that's the real advantage of these workflows that you can use it inside of obsidian with all the benefits it offers so if you're quite new to obsidian do check out my obsidian course i teach you from the basics how to use obsidian so do check it out i really appreciate that it. it supports this channel it helps me make more videos and i think it's going to be a really good resource for you if you really want to see everything that obsidian can do because it really is such a powerful tool that I really, really love. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in the language learning aspect of how I use this, definitely check out my other channel. I'll leave that in the description. And with that said, I hope you have a great day. See ya.